We going all the way in. Yes, sir. I ain't even know it. Got the revelation. Now I got to own it. Oh, oh. Where's the JG? I'm at the bush shining. Sheesh. I'm a threat to the enemy and that's no promise. I'm here on assignment. Go, 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 go. Seven twenty-four hours. It's we on the time and that's how we move as seven twenty-four hours. Go, 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 go,
a vision, insight to sustain him and navigate him through the nuances of this particular season. Man, Scripture says in 1 Kings 17 and 2 that the word of the Lord came to Elijah and he told him to leave here, turn eastward, hide in the Kareth Ravine, east of Jordan. When you get there, you will drink from the brook and I have directed, powerful, the ravens to supply food for you there. So he did (laughs) what the Lord told him. How important it is that when God gives you an instruction, a revelation, an idea, a vision, that you follow that plan because it's literally the thing that's going to sustain your life. It's the thing that keeps you. It's the way that God leads you and guides you to protect what he placed inside of you. I mean, this is just a phase and a moment and a season in Elijah's life and ministry. He has so much more to do, so much more to accomplish, so much more that God's going to do through his life. But in this particular season, he gives him direction to hide out in a space, to to rest in a season, to be sustained in the middle of a drought. God gives him clear, clear understanding. You see, you have to be careful that while you are trying to interpret, dissect, or understand, or discern the will of God for your life, the vision that God gives you, that you be careful to what you read, and what you see, and what you hear, because whatever you read, whatever you see, whatever you hear will determine what you do, right? Whatever you read, see, hear will determine literally what you do. So you have to guard your gates, guard your eye gates, your ear gates. Make sure that you protect what goes in because I always tell you whatever goes in your ear gets in your heart. What gets in your heart comes out your mouth. What comes out your mouth shows up in your life. God spoke to Elijah, said, here, go to this particular place because I have provided provision for you. Tonight, I want you to deal with and understand kingdom provision. Kingdom provision. Three things we're going to deal with and talk about. Number one is that provision is always locked inside of vision. Your provision is inside of your God-given vision. The second thing is that provision is in God's plan. That's right. It's in God's plan that he always provides for you the resources that you need to accomplish whatever he's calling you to do. And third and last not least, and really there's no numerical order here because provision is God's promise for you. That's right. This is not just some wish. God has uh, made a declaration that he will provide for his people. And so that word pro Vision. I mean, vision is hidden inside of provision, literally, not just in the essence of this statement, but provision has the word vision in it. And the word pro literally means earlier or prior or before to 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 provide for earlier, to make a pre-plan, a pro plan for provision (laughs) before the vision arrives. And so the key is this, that your provision is locked inside your vision or it is unlocked in your vision right? The thing about vision, if we just go ahead and recap real quick, that vision defines itself uh, as a desire or the intended future or state of strategic direction. If you haven't checked out uh, the vision series here at Afterglow, go back and watch a few of them and catch up. Vision is a preview of your purpose. Vision is a preview of your purpose, or it is your purpose in pictures. So whenever God gives you a vision, you see a glimpse of yourself somewhere else, doing something else, acting, behaving, living in another manner than the way that you currently live. It is a preview, and oftentimes a preview in pictures. Sometimes you see it before you hear it. And and I and I tell you that that sight then natural sight can be the antithesis of vision because uh, uh, Helen Keller put it like this she said the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision because oftentimes it is your sight that is contrary to your vision right where I am what I see with my natural eyes is often different from what I see with my spiritual eyes and so you can't let what your natural seeing talk you out of your spiritual understanding and so when God gives you a revelation a vision a 
in sight for your life, for your future. Sometimes your sight will contradict it, but don't ever give up on your God-given vision until what you see with your natural eyes matches what you see with your spiritual eyes. You see, having vision is knowing God's plan for your life. This is the actual key to your prosperity. I always say that poverty is just missing a perspective, right? Poverty is missing a perspective, missing a understanding and so God's prosperity for your life, his, his perfect prosperity for your life is locked inside the purpose or the assignment that he's given you to do in your life. When you are doing the thing that you were born or created to do, it should provide for you in the area of your basic needs, right? So God never gives you a vision for your life without supplying provision for it. And so, and the truth is we often want the resources or the money before we actually do whatever God's shown us to do. But the truth is you don't need it until you have vision for it. Uh, uh, You don't need it until you have vision for it. And this is why oftentimes if you were to be honest, we squandered a lot of money and we squandered a, a lot of uh, a lot of, of a lot of resources and in squandering the resources that we had what we found ourselves doing is that oftentimes God gave us money and resources before we actually had a plan for it and the truth about prosperity or money is that it follows a plan some people call it a budget right but until you have a, a plan for your resources then anything can take or distract or steal from the resources so so you you don't really need it until you have a vision for it. And if you have the vision for it, then you become attractive for the thing that God supplies for you to do. See, he provided and has provided everything you need before you need it. That's why it's called provision. You see, he doesn't reveal the provision for it until after you need it. You see, you don't have to see everything all at one time, just as long as when you reach for it, when you gather it, when you go for it, that you have it. And so the the method by which God moves us into this dynamic is that when he gives you a vision for it, then he gives you an understanding of what it is he wants you to do with it, and then resources become, you become attractive or attracting the things that God has selected and assigned for you to do. The revelation is this. Hear what I'm saying, that God usually uses one thing to reproduce many things. People often have multiple talents or are able to do a multiplicity of things, and that's great that you're multi-talented and that you can even multitask, but it's usually the one thing, the main thing. Keep the main thing. The main thing is usually the main thing that God gives you to do that opens or reproduces many things. And we're going to see this in this story because this is so relevant and so true because when God reveals to Elijah that he's trapped his provision inside of his vision. We see him move to a place where God told him to be. And in that one space that seemed desolate and dormant and isolated, we see him literally be able to tap into the resources of God's purpose and plan and provision for his life. And I'm telling you, when you look at God's God's direction, when you hear God properly and see what he's showing you, that God has perfectly aligned everything in your atmosphere and your environment that's properly and perfectly in your reach. 1 Kings 17, 2 and 10 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, Leave here. (laughs) Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah and said, Leave here. Remember I told you whatever you listen to determines what you do. If you hear wrong, you live wrong. If you see wrong, if you're wrongly influenced or impacted in your life, it will impact the dimensions of how you move. And so, so when he tells him to leave here, he's shifting him, moving him from one place and to another. And so when you are um, a provision minded, you can't be purpose minded, right? So if you're too busy thinking about how you're going to survive, how you're going to eat, how you're going to pay for, how you're going to get it done, then you can't, you can't properly follow the, the instruction of God because God never meant for you to be uh, more <laughs> provision minded. Then you are purpose minded, which is why in the essence of him having a provision for you. He in advance, ad, he in advance 
uh, provides for you so you don't have to worry about that part. You ought to type, I'm not worried about that part. I'm not going to worry about it because God has provided for me in advance. You see, purpose has prosperity in it. Purpose has prosperity in it. And when you live in your purpose and functioning in your purpose, and I keep telling you purpose is not a job or the place you work or the place you live, it's how you work, it's what you do in the fulfillment of your assignment. And so purpose has locked inside of it prosperity. And so when God sends him to a particular place and sits him in a particular seat, he's telling him that everything he needs is going to be in that place. And if everything you need is not coming to you or coming out of a moment, then, then perhaps you're not in the right space where you're supposed to be, right? And with, it's in your reach. It's, it's coming to you. It's being provided for you. It's being aligned with you. And so your ability to hear God and move in the direction and the instruction that he's giving you to be is your strategy or your secret for success. The second thing is not only is, is the provision inside the vision and God tells him to leave here. The, the next thing that he says, he says, you will drink from the brook and I have directed the ravens to supply food for you there. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply food for you there. You see, by God being a God of provision, God has already preordained your provision. He tells him, he says, when you go there, I have already directed the ravens to meet you where you're going to be. So, so it's like if God says, I need you to be at a particular place, then it is at that place that everything you need is aligned for you. Every relationship and friendship and insight and connection and resource, it's aligned or attracted to you being in the proper place where you're supposed to be. God is a God of pro vision. So literally, he's giving you a vision to be in a place where he's already assigned what you need to be in that space. He's preordained your provision. Let's back it up with some more scripture since we're here in Bible study. Psalm 16, 5 and 6 says, the Lord, you have assigned my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, and surely I have a delightful inheritance. Lord, you have assigned, pre-assigned my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. I'm not hustling for it, worried about it, stressing about it. You have pre-ordained, pre-assigned what belongs to me. All I got to do is get to the place that's assigned for me, that's assigned for me. And when I get there, everything that's assigned to me will find me in that place. You see, God provides everything. He provides everything, but he provides it after you work the vision or after you write the vision, right? It's like, it's like you can't go, in, in the natural sense, you can't go to a bank and try to apply for a business loan without a business plan. The, the money will not be released to you until you have done the proper perspective and laid down the proper principles of how you're going to spend it, how you will allocate the funds if they're released. You see, the thinking and the dreaming and the praying and the preparation goes before or you literally get the release of the resources that's needed to accomplish it. And many of you that are listening and watching have been waiting till you get the resources before you start writing. But I keep telling you, you got to write it. You got to speak it. You got to say it. You got to think it. So that by the time you, you get the resources released to you, it's attracted and assigned on paper to the thing that you're called and supposed to do. So, you know, God tells him, he says, get here, and when you get here, I'll do that there. I'll already have an assignment there for whatever I have called you to do, and, and it's a difficult space, but difficult situations inspire ingenious solutions, right? It's unconventional the way that God is instructing Elijah. It's unconventional the way that God is about to fund 
this vision or this instruction. It's unconventional. The resources that he's about to use to release to Elijah. It's, it's unconventional. The funders that he's about to send to Elijah to accomplish what he showed him to do. And I'm just telling you that that, that what God has called you to do, don't you get discouraged because you don't see the money yet, right? It's ingenious. It's unconventional. It's not normal. It's not regular or ordinary the way that God's going to send what you need to accomplish what he's called you to do. But trust me and know <laughs> that he's provided it in advance. You see, provision is usually hidden until you act on what he told you to do. The third thing, and I'm out and just build some scripture on top of this for the essence of building your faith is that provision is God's promise. And God is not a man that he can lie. If God promises you a thing, you got to build everything on what he promised you. When God gives you an instruction or a direction, you got to build everything on what it is that he told you. And so if God makes you a promise, he's not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. He won't lie. It won't lie. I'm telling you, God is a promise keeper, and he promises to provide for you. Third John 1 and 2 says it like this, Beloved, I would that you will prosper in every way, that your body may be well, even I know as your soul will prosper. That's a promise. You ought to type, and that's a promise. I would that you will prosper in every way. That's all your needs met. That's everything that you need to do, everything that you need to do. And when we talk about prosperity, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about your relationships intact, your health intact, your mind intact, your emotions intact, your friends friendships intact. Everything you need is in the proper place. You see, prosperity means that you have everything you need to complete a divine assignment, that everything you need is in place for you to do what God has told you to do. And I know that sometimes we can feel the tension or the gaps, but the truth of the matter is that sometimes God leaves the gaps because he wants you to know that he's sending help your way. And you don't have everything in the moment, but everything that you need is coming because it's there, even if it's not there, because the unseen is revealed in the scene, and the scene reveals the unseen. And so you got to step out on faith and know that if I write it, if I speak it, if I believe it, if I know it came from God, if I know that God is leading me and taking me and moving me, if I know that God told me to sit in a seat and be in a place, that everything I need is in that place. <laughs> First, Second Peter 1 and 3 says that God's divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. God's divine power has given us everything. There we go again. That word, everything you need. God's divine power has given you everything you need for life and godliness. This is the promise and the provision of God. You ought to type, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. Look at it. Let's get another scripture. I want to keep on feeding your faith and starving your fears. Matthew 6, 31 says, so do not worry. So do not worry. So do not worry. Do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the unbelievers run after these things. But all the king's kids that follow God's plan says, but your heavenly father knows that you, what you have need of before you ask. Here's the verse, 33, but seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his way of doing things and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you and given to you as well. Seek ye first what the purpose and the plan of God is for your life. And when you seek the purpose and the plan of God, not the hand of God, but the will of God, when you seek the purpose and the plan of God, then all these things will be added. You become attractive. You become a magnet for manifestation. Things start looking for you that belongs to you because we don't chase money. Money chase us. We don't chase money. We attract it. We attract it. We attract resources because you only need certain resources when you're going to, when you know exactly what to do with them. Look at the, the verse. Verse 6 says, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and, and he drank from the brook, which means that when he was hungry, the, the food showed up. When he was thirsty, there it was. When he was 
was hungry in the morning, it was there. When he was hungry in the evening, it was there. And we see God has a track record. This isn't just some one-off time. We see him do the same thing with the children of Israel, with the quail and with the manna. So this is God's reputation. So why are you holding up your progress and holding up your provision because you're waiting for, for, for the resources to be released when the resources have already been assigned and established and just waiting for you to have a plan so you'll know what to do with it when it shows up. Don't wait because sometimes God doesn't give us everything that we need at a moment uh, in our hand because he's assigned other resources to release them to us. He's assigned, assigned other times uh, to release certain things to us at certain times. Uh, and, and, and what you have to understand is that when you obey the purpose and the plan of God he, and, and you're in the right posture, in the right position, he starts releasing resources to you. And I believe that what's been assigned to you is about to be released to you. I believe that what's been assigned to you is about to be released to you. I believe that those of you that are in the right place at the right time with the right mind, with the right plan, and you know, oh, oh I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do with it when I get it. I know exactly what I'm going to do with it when I get it, that God's going to release it to you at the point in time. And I'm telling you, in January, at the top of 2022, don't wait for it, write it. Don't wait, don't wait for it, write it. Write it, speak it, say it, believe it. And the more that you begin to behave according to that belief, the more you'll come, the more things will come to you. And the ravens, and the ravens, ingenuous, in ingenious solutions, right? The ravens. I mean, think about that. Ravens come and show up to eat from you and to eat off of you. Here, God give a, a divine reversal, and the thing that's supposed to eat you now comes to feed you. And I'm telling you that there are things that have, have looked like they were supposed to take from you and take advantage of you. Those were lessons that you were supposed to learn and things that you were supposed to understand and moments in time that God's going to flip to give you understanding, insight, and revelation and understanding about what you need to do next. And I'm telling you that what would have took from you is about to give to you. The Lord is your shepherd and you shall lack nothing. Come on. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? The ravens are coming. I preached that message before. I love it. I'm telling you the ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. The ravens are coming. They coming to release to you what belongs to you. And you got to believe God has positioned you in the right place to attract it. God's going to use one thing. I told you to produce many things. Look at that. The ravens. One thing to produce many things. One thing. What's your one thing? What's your one idea? What's your one plan? What's the one thing that gives you the advantage? What's the one thing God's telling you to do? What's the one thing in the plan of God that you know is the will of God that he's leading you to do that opens up many other opportunities, many other streams, many other resources, many other things that he wants you to do? God God uses one thing to reproduce many things. So don't look for the many things. Look for the one thing, and God's going to help you to get it done. You hear what I'm saying? I hope you learned something tonight. My God, I'm so full of this. I won't get to do it all here at Afterglow. Matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to be teaching a free master class. That's right, to help you move into the purpose and your future. It's called Focus on the Five, y'all. You got to register at jamonglenn.com. Many of you have already registered. Those of you that didn't know nothing, about it. It's a free master class. It's on a Wednesday night. I'm so passionate about this. I want to make sure that you have the tools that you need to succeed. So I'm going to talk about five areas in your life that if you establish them as a foundation, you'll move further, faster. Let me help you get it in and get it done. It's tomorrow. Register tonight. If you haven't done so, we're about to close out that registration, all right? I'm so excited about what God is doing in your life, and I'm passionate about this vision. We're going to get it in one more time, <laughs> and then we're going to shift in February for a new series called Unexpected Love, y'all. And guess what? I'm bringing Pastor Erica with me. We're going to talk about unexpected love. Make sure you have faith for your family and faith for your future. Listen, I hope this message bless you tonight, that you're learning and that you're growing and that you're growing and that you're learning and that you're growing and learning and learning and growing and that it's helping you. And if it is, <laughs> I need you to sow where you grow. That's right. So where you go right here. I ask you to give at least $22 on a Tuesday. I told y'all, thank you for sowing. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for contributing. I ask y'all, listen, if this is blessing you to let me know by putting some seed in the ground. It's coming back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. When we sow, we say I'm a tither and a giver. I'm blessed beyond measure. Got more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life three ways to give on the bottom of the screen so we can get it in. It's coming back to you. 
Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you can follow the directions on the bottom of the screen. Text New Life to 91694. Somebody reach out to you. It's the best and the most important decision you could ever make. I don't want you to just be caught up <laughs> in your wish. I want you to be in God's plan and his will, all right? Pastor Hannah's coming Thursday. We're going to keep pushing into this series next Sunday and close it out, the unexpected part one. <laughs> and we're going to keep pushing. I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. Glow up there. Thank you. Everybody share. Everybody share. Everybody let somebody know. Hey, watch it again. I don't know if I went fast or slow. I get caught up and I just go. You know what I'm saying? But everybody get connected. Hopefully, I see you in the master class tomorrow. Watch this again. Share this again. Tag somebody. Let me know. It's blessing you in the afterglow. All right? Peace. And we out. And we out. Let's go. Hey. Yay.